Hey, what's up everybody and welcome to another Hashtag Celebrate Columbus show. My name is Josh Burnett and I'm super excited to be in the Celebrate Columbus studio with our guest today, author, adjunct, professor, and inspirational speaker, yeah. Tim Orr. Thanks for being here today. Great to be here. Great to be here. I really appreciate it. And we've got two books that we're going to be talking about today. Very excited to introduce you to uh, this local author who's doing some big things on places <laughs> like Amazon and uh, you're doing some speaking things and it just seems like you have a, a really cool direction that you're going in. But before we get into that, tell us a little bit about you, Tim, because people hopefully will learn more about you in the book, but if they haven't read the book yet, who is Tim Orr? Yeah, yeah. Well, um, kind of this, uh, the introduction covers a little bit of it. I'm, uh, I'm an adjunct uh, professor in religious studies. Um, I've been doing that for about 10 years at Indiana University, Purdue University, Columbus. Shout out to IUPUC. Yeah. That's one of our sponsors. Okay, great, great. Yeah. And uh, so I do that. I uh, write books and I uh, speak. But what I want to do, I have a real passion to share uh, the love of Christ, uh, um, to share the gospel, and to share the transformational, uh, uh, what God can do in, in a person's life. And so that is a, a, lot, a lot of my passion. Um, mm -hmm. As far as my family is concerned, unfortunately last year, uh, um, my uh, uh, wife, actually it's 2016, I guess it's January now, she passed away un unexpectedly. Mm. And uh, actually she was driving down the road with my daughter in the back seat and uh, she felt like she was going to uh, uh, um, pass out. She pulled over and uh, she lost consciousness and my daughter was in the back seat. And uh, so I, she got out of the seat, tried to wake her up and, and she passed away. Mm. So that kind of changed the direction obviously of our life. Um, but it's, it's been, uh, those, it's been difficult, mm -hmm. uh, uh, but it's, 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 it's been uh, um, a lot of cool things that God has done. Mm. Um, you know, I have the daughter. She's amazing. Uh, uh, she's eight years old now. And what's her name? Uh, her name is Faith. Awesome. And so we adopted her and uh, just an incredible personality. People are naturally drawn to. It used to be and my name. That's her, right? Yeah, yeah, that's her. That's her. She's She's got a great smile. <laughs> she does. She, she, I, I used to have my own identity. Mm -hmm. That was Tim Orr. Yeah. And I've lost that. Yeah. I'm now faced that. Hey. So, yeah, yeah. That's cool. So she, it's, it's cool because when we go into a restaurant, people just gra just like gravitate and she just cap captivates the room. Mm -hmm. uh, so she has a special, unique gift and uh, she's very confident. Now she does have Down syndrome. We mm -hmm. actually um, adopted her at birth. Wow. And, and it's kind of a cool story because we were going through this whole process of adoption. And she wasn't, uh, we weren't sure what direction we would go. Mm -hmm. And I walked into a, uh, a special needs classroom, it was a preschool classroom. And a little girl named Lydia walks up to me and wants me to pick her up. Wow. So I do. So I pick mm -hmm. her up and yeah. we kind of go around the room and, and I kind of show her around the room and I, I, set, I put her down and she walks away. And then she walks towards me again and she, I just want me to pick her up. And I do, and I just felt like, man, I, the thought really never ever crossed my mind at this point until then, that maybe we look into a, adopting a child with Down syndrome. So later on that day, I, I go and tell my wife, I said, I, you know, I want to run this by you, mm -hmm. but I think I'm, you know, what do you think about adopting a child with Down syndrome? She says, I think that's a great idea. Why don't you look into it? So the next day, I called the Greater Down Syndrome Association of Cincinnati, Ohio. And when I do, uh, um, they say, you know what, there's a couple in, uh, uh, that, that's in uh, Indiana mm -hmm. that wants to put their child up for adoption. They want it to be an open adoption. She's about the eighth month, and so she's, it's not going to be two, our seventh or eighth month. So it's late in the pregnancy. And um, so we meet, and when we do, it's like we've known each other all of our lives. Wow. And, um, and so uh, about a week or so later, we get a call, and they said, you know what, the family wants to, uh, they've chosen you guys to adopt faith. Hmm. So by the time I call, uh, uh, the first time, when, when I was in the, uh, 
uh, special needs classroom mm -hmm. to the time we received faith was a period of seven weeks. Wow. It was incredible. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So, and, but what's interesting, the challenge there was one of those moments when we had to trust God right before a faith was going to be born. We got a phone call from the parents that uh, we were able to go and talk to the doctor to talk about the medical issues. So, so we knew. Mm -hmm. So my wife and I, we travel over there uh, to Indianapolis, and we hear the, the, the typical things, that, the possibilities that a child with Down syndrome may have, right. heart problems and so on. Uh, then we got some news what we didn't expect at all. And that news was uh, that she may have Danny Walker syndrome. She may not be able to walk or talk. Mm. And so we were, we were devastated. Yeah. We go home. We make that long hour ride home. My wife uh, uh, was just distraught. Mm -hmm. I was too. We finally arrive. She walks into the room where uh, Faith was going to have her room. She prostrates herself on the floor and just begins to pray. Mm. I, on the other hand, I go to the computer, see, search feverishly right. for, for the information. Sounds like me. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> yeah. exactly, exactly. And, and, but I also call my mom because, mm. see, I was born with, with uh, uh, deformities that resulted in 20 operations wow. uh, uh, at, at Riley Hospital. Mm. So I spent a great deal of my summers uh, 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 growing up at Riley Hospital. And my mom, when I called her, I told her the, the, di the possible diagnosis. Mm -hmm. And she said she remembers a time when I was very, very young. <clears throat> there was a, uh, a, a uh, mother that came. She gave birth to the baby. It was severely deformed. She left and never came back. Wow. She didn't want the baby. And when I, heard, when, I, when I heard that story, I said, I am not going to be that parent. Mm -hmm. Whatever the results were, we were going to trust God in that situation. And so as a result, um, we then, uh, um, uh, a few days later, we, we, no, we say, we're, we're in on this, we're all in on this. The baby's born, faith is born. We go to the hospital. And we get to see her, and we notice that her legs are kicking mm -hmm. like that. And I, and I thought, I looked at my wife, and I said, this has got to be a good sign. Right, right, right. <laughs> I'm not a doctor. Yeah. I, I got a C in science. Yeah. But, but I'm pretty <laughs> sure that this is, this, this is good. Right. So, so I, um, and she thought the same, and so, you know, the doctors do the rounds. And finally, the neurologist comes by. And, and I said, you know, we want to know if she has Danny Walker syndrome. And he says, well, I see your legs moving. That's a good sign. I told my wife. I said, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so they, they do a test right there, show her that she doesn't have it. And so then we, we, we have a, a healthy baby. She didn't have to do uh, two months in there, but it was after she was done in two months, she was fine. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's how we got entered into uh, family life. We never had children before. Mm -hmm. uh, we waited to the four, uh, uh, till uh, I was forty. My wife was forty-two. I'm not supposed. To, I wasn't supposed to ever repeat that information, but it's on the air now. But going back, sort of going back into to the story there earlier on, I come out of drugs and alcohol. I get saved. You know, mm. that, that I had this conversion, and I go to uh, this uh, Christian university. Mm. I go into chapel, and I, and I hear this promise that God would restore everything that the locusts has sent and eaten. Mm. And, and I, I should just trust him. I took that to mean that God would give me a wife and a family because I, I come from a very broken family. Mm. And, and, and so about a year or two later, God gives me a wife. Mm. But um, it, it, it took 16 years right. to finally arrive when we got faith. Yeah. Now, what I didn't know is that promise would only last six years. Mm. Uh, 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 because uh, six years later after Faith was born, we got her, uh, Michelle passed away. Mm -hmm. But um, I tell you, life with uh, Faith is great, uh, uh, despite obstacles. Yeah. You know, we live in a fallen world. We can expect these things to happen. Mm -hmm. 
you know, sometimes we, we, we ask the question, you know, why do bad things like this happen? Mm -hmm. But if you understand the idea that we're in a fallen world, the question may ought to be, why does not things like this happen more often? Mm. It, 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 and so it's, it's the grace mm. that, that we receive. And, and, but yeah, I think that um, we have grown closer together. Uh, um, we, I, actually, when I tried to do, I tried to have a, 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 her just to have some good memories of her mom. Yeah. Because right before she, she um, the, week, the month before Michelle died, we go to Disney World. Oh, nice. So we, we then, uh, Michelle dies, then I'm going to recapture that. Mm. So I, I want to capture uh, that 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 time they had, and not have how she died being cemented in her mind. Right. So five months later, after that, uh, uh, we get ready to go to Disney World. Then, at, at uh, on the Friday before we were to leave on that Monday, I'm at, at Harrison Country Club getting mm -hmm. ready to play golf. Yeah. And I get a phone call, and it's from my brother, and uh, I found out that my. Uh, 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 brother had just been killed by a drunk driver. Wow. So I, I uh, preached his funeral on that Monday, which is the day that we uh, um, uh, leave for Florida. Mm. Um, but with all those obstacles, with all those things uh, happening, um, I can say I'm probably, because um, uh, sort of what, God can do in, in situations like this is draw him closer, uh, uh, us closer to him. And uh, though it's very painful, though I miss my wife very dearly, I miss my brother, I, 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 I know that, you know, there's, uh, this is not the last time I'll see my wife. Mm. Uh, but we are, uh, it's been amazing the grace we've been bestowed upon and, um, we, we have a great relationship, her and I. And so I can truly say that I'm happy, that I have a joy. And uh, because it's a joy that's not a product right. of just me, it, it, yeah. it's, it comes from, uh, um, you know, somewhere else. So I appreciate you, uh, you know, sharing with Columbus, you know, yeah. part of the, the tragedy, but also the transformation. And it's very apparent just looking at you that, <laughs> that there is joy because happiness is oftentimes based on circumstances, right? Right, right, And right. joy is, you know, being, my dad always says, abs absolutely positively convinced that God is in control of your life. Yeah, yeah. And, and being okay with that. You know? Right, right, exactly. Because he oftentimes has a different plan for our lives than, than we would plan. Yeah. You know, I never had this plan to be doing a Celebrate Columbus show and you know maybe you didn't have a plan to have exactly what's happened but through it um, I think he's he's helping us uh, become the people he wants us to be yeah 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 I, I, I so true I, and I think because we live in a fallen world that other people experience tragedy and loss mm -hmm. and one of the there, there's a scripture that really was become very important to me mm. Um, not too long after I, my conversion, but basically, and to sum it up, it's in Second Corinthians chapter one, verses uh, three and four, I think. And it, it basically says, "The grace, the love that God ministered to you, there you more minister to others." Mm. And what I found is that I love people more. I'm far more patient. Uh, uh, um, I'm far more. Uh, uh, loving and uh, than, than I was uh, uh, before, uh, because when you receive the, the the love and the grace of God and, and, and in a real way, um, you want to share that w w with others, and I, I've really found that to be totally true. Mm. Uh, and uh, so there's definitely something redemptive that happens. I think this is important to understand because I think that's something that secular culture can't offer. Mm. Uh, because in a secular culture, everything is about the here and now. Right. And so if the here and now is not good, pleasant, that kind of thing, there's nothing that goes beyond this world, uh, uh, then um, you've just lost out. But, but, but if you are coming from a different perspective and, and with eternal eternity in mind, 
um, it really changes your, your your perspective on what you're going through, and you can be victorious. Mm. You, you, you know, you, you don't have to say, "Well, I've lost out. Mm. I, I, I haven't." Uh, um, I, I I I you know, am and and happy despite uh, uh, the circumstances, and, and I'm looking forward every day. Every day when when I, when I come to pick her up, she's got this great smile. Mm -hmm. She wants. She wants to. Yeah, you know, she's happy to see me. Right. I mean, I used to own a, you know, pets, and they were never happy to see me. They're supposed to be. <laughs> right. You know, kids. But but she's happy to see me every day. So she, and and, and that's special. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know, that's a, a a blessing. And um and I that's something that I doubted that I would ever receive. Mm -hmm. You know, I had to wait until I was forty years old. Yeah. To to, to receive that. And uh, but I'm. So glad uh, that I did. So geez. thanks for sharing that. Yeah, yeah, she's a blessing. So let's talk a little bit about these books, okay? Yes, uh, yes. We've we've uh, heard a little bit from you just about you know your wife, your family, and I think it gives people a great context to you and in, in you know writing down stories. You know, tell me a little bit about we named her Faith. You know, this was your first book. Yeah, that was my first one. Okay, and so you know how we became a gospel center family. Um, what is We Named Her Faith about for people, you know, if they haven't read it yet? Yeah, yeah. Well, first of all, I, I've, been, I've been very happy with the success of the book. Yeah. It's been really, really nice because that was my first book. No one knew Tim Moore. You right, know, no yeah. one, you know, it was an unknown author. And mm. just a couple days after it came out, I logged on to Amazon. I found out it was on the bestseller list. Uh, 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 of Amazon, so that was a very pleasant surprise. That's so cool. I, I really found the power of social media. That yeah, point. yeah. We, we have been doing a lot of advertising then, uh, so that one pretty much even today stays on uh, one of the bestseller lists. It's been number one on both uh, the print and the uh, Kindle version, which is where I read a lot of books. Yeah, I yeah, me too, me too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, I, I, I kind of got um, like the Kindle a few years ago because my wife told me I could not have any more tangible books. <laughs> so I was forced nice. into the love of, of the Kindle. But this really tells the backstory. You know, this tells um, the story about my, uh, you know, growing up, you know, I grew up, uh, uh, you know, in a very uh, abusive home. Mm. I uh, had 20 operations. Mm. Um, at 15 years old, I was an alcoholic. Wow. And 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 uh, I, from 15 to 21, I was uh, uh, obsessed with suicide, mm. and almost I tell the story of how I almost carried that out, and and so, uh, but something happened to me. Uh, I, I got arrested for the third time, <laughs> and uh, it drove me to a place where I had to really think about my life. And I, I, I gave my heart uh, to Christ. That didn't mean everything was wonderful then. For sure. But that was definitely the game changer. Mm. So, so, so I, I tell the background. I, tell, I introduce a Michelle. Mm -hmm. Now, she doesn't have an exciting background as I do, which is good. <laughs> yeah. I always right? remind her, no, 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 honey, that's a good thing. Right. It, it, you know? And uh, she was always the straight A student, and, and, and yeah. I, I was not. And so she, uh, so I introduced them, and I kind of the backstory because we couldn't have kids, mm -hmm. and that was devastating for us. Mm. So what we did, we put our uh, whole life in, into ministry. Mm -hmm. We uh, went to East Chicago, Indiana, planted a church. We were there oh. in that area for ten years, and um, what the, the our desire to have kids uh, was kind of transition to ministering to kids who needed ministry mm. and so there was a redemptive uh, process there mm. uh, so so I, I share that and I tell kind of the story there and then finally we begin to want to adopt mm. and um, then some of the stories I, I've already shared and mm -hmm. I, I share those and um, but I'm real in this yeah you won't find the polished varnish uh, uh, there because I don't, uh, number one that's not me. Mm -hmm. I'm not polished. I'm not varnished. I will tell anybody. <laughs> yeah. Well, people that know me already know that, but but for people that don't, yeah. Uh, because I, I think that um, uh, you know we don't want to market it to more. We we're real to how how yeah. the, if you're gonna tell how God moved in your life, 
tell really how you mm-hmm. know the struggles yeah uh, the pain you know the things that I, you know uh, that I had to go through with my dad you know those kinds of things so I, I go through that but then I uh, talk about the um, the adoption process but then I introduce faith mm. and you get a real picture of her I mean this girl is an overcomer they, they told me that, that when we left, don't expect her to drink out of a bottle till uh, probably a year. Uh, uh, just a few weeks after we left, she was drinking out of a bottle. Wow. She no longer needed a G-tube. They said, don't expect her to walk until after two years. She was walking in 17 or 18 months. Uh, uh, they, they told us not to expect her to read well in three, third, third and fourth grade. Well, she was reading by the first grade, and she does very well. Now, mm-hmm. that part of it is... Michelle, a little bit of it's me, and, and of course, Taylorsville Elementary plays a big part in that. They, they've been incredible as well. So it's kind of this team effort, yeah. but she has this innate desire to want to read. That's awesome. And she loves it. I, I remember going out the door one day, and as I'm going out the door, she's sitting there with all their dolls lined up. And she, she had not been able to read. She hadn't read there at that time. But she was mock reading to her dolls. <laughs> she was doing the things that Michelle and I had been doing with her. Yeah. But she was doing with with, with the dolls, and and so since my uh, we we had backgrounds. My wife was a school teacher. She she's taught years here in the BCSC system, and uh, one of her master's degree was reading. Uh, so she didn't know she never re- use it because yeah. she was a Spanish teacher. Okay. Well, she did. And I had an elementary, uh, my first master's in elementary education. I found out early on that I'm not a good elementary teacher. <laughs> so there was something redemptive in that education as well. Uh-huh. So we began to use that information to kind of pour into to faith and, 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 and develop her because we were so grateful of the opportunity that we had. You know, my wife sp- spent her whole life up until the last six years wanting to be a mom. Mm. And when she was given that opportunity, she took full there. I mean, she was the best mom I think I've ever met. And she took the full opportunity and poured into her. As a matter of fact, she used to take, Michelle uh, Michelle used to take Faith to the uh, park all the time. Mm -hmm. And on the day she passed away, she didn't feel very well, but she took her to the park and we have that video. Oh. Uh, 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 there uh, of, of uh, her kind of taking her to the park but that's the kind of love and commitment that she had so she took the best most of the opportunity uh, uh, that, that, that she had so I, I talked there I talked about the things that we had uh, we, we had we had a vision for faith mm-hmm. we had a plan for her so I, 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 I uh, talked because we had goals that we wanted her to do she may get married. I'm, I'm still, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm not so sure about that. I wonder if they would daddy. Yeah. But we wanted to get her to the place where she can at least live on her own in some capacity mm-hmm. and enjoy life to the fullest. Awesome. And so we tried to do that. So I tell about that mm-hmm. in this book here. Nice. Yeah. So that's great. And I really appreciate you being able to tell a little bit more about that because you said this one, how long has it been around for? Uh, since 2015. 15 and it is just like flying off the virtual bookshelf yes. of Amazon. <laughs> and so Columbus, if you haven't read, we named her Faith, uh, where they can get that on Amazon. Is there? Yeah, yeah, you can get that on Amazon, of course. Uh, you can get the paperback version mm-hmm. uh, on uh, different bookstores. You can order it. Um, Viewpoint Bookstores uh, has uh, uh, the, the books. And, okay, great. And, and so that's a great place to. Uh, to go as well locally yeah uh, but certainly Amazon you get the paperback on Amazon Barnes and Noble and so on yeah uh, but the uh, digital version is solely on uh, Amazon so, awesome yeah. well now let's talk about letters to my daughter yeah um, so this is a great picture of you guys and like you said uh, she's just got that huge smile on her face <laughs> what is letters to my daughter about yeah yeah and so w- what I do I, I kind of introduce some backstory, mm-hmm. <clears throat> but I take the the reader through this whole process of uh, because we originally thought she had cancer. Really? Yeah, and, and so she was off work for a few months, mm-hmm. 
And so I take the reader through that whole ordeal. And so we, we didn't know if she was going to make it or not. Then, uh, come March, April, we, she, she was given a clean bill of health. Hmm. And she was fine. But we had a lot of talks during that time. Talks that what happens if she's not going to be here? Right. You know, what, what happens if, you know, what, what do we do? And so uh, we begin to think things through. And that was almost like the grace of God preparing us. Mm-hmm. So uh, after that, uh, I, I kind of take the, the reader from there to uh, I walked through the Disney World trip and what that all looked like. And we were excited because we were there the first time celebrating the fact that she was going to be fine. Yeah. That we were going to, she was going to, uh, we were uh, going to be together for years to come. And so we left in Disney World uh, on May 27th, 2016. Mm. Then on June 27th, 2016, I get the call. And, and I, I, I'll never forget that <clears throat> as long as I live. Mm-hmm. I, I, I get the call and uh, they said something bad's happened. They rushed Michelle to the hospital. And uh, I'm worried, I'm praying, I'm calling, and uh, I get the call about 25 minutes later that she had passed away. Mm-hmm. So I go there. Uh, uh, we go to the funeral, obviously. How do you explain this to a six-year-old? Yeah. So I kind of share that. Cause I, and, and when we get back, and we, we finally get home after the funeral, I walk into the door, and, and uh, Faith asks me, when's Mommy coming home? Mm. And I had to tell her, honey, Mommy's not coming back. So I had, I, I had, I had to tell her also that um, uh, uh, she asked me, you know, so how come I couldn't wake Mommy up? How come I couldn't wake Mommy up? So I show how I deal with those circumstances. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, and so I go through that scenario that, that I, I mentioned, but I also spend the last fourth of the book writing letters to her mm. as a uh, father would advice mm. to a daughter that's not going to be, uh, uh, not going to have a mother. And so I, I write that, and so I, I, I share that. At the last chapter, right before the very end, the second to last chapter, I write a goodbye letter to, to Michelle. Mm. A, a, and uh, thanking her for all the times that, that, that we had together. And, uh, but um, if, Michelle, if Faith was going to have a mom again, I would have a wife again. You know, the, the whole idea of two becoming one flesh, I had to, uh, uh, you know, in, in my heart, say goodbye, not for good, but, but for, for here. So I, so I, so I uh, share that. Mm. And so um, then, then the last, last part of the book, I share what I learned mm. uh, for, from all of this. So, yeah. That's incredible. I mean, I appreciate you, you know, being so transparent and real. Yeah. You know, it seems like that is the reason why people are connecting with this book is that it's yeah. real. Yes, yes. And life's not perfect. Right. Um, you know, nothing, we can plan for a lot of stuff, but health issues, mm-hmm. you know, our family knows about it. Your family knows about it. Several people watching this, you know, they've yeah. dealt with tragedy. But uh, thankfully, you know, because of uh, our belief system, yeah, yeah. that there is hope regardless. Yeah. You know, before we uh, kind of end things on this mm-hmm. conversation today, uh-huh. uh, a question that I like to ask everybody who comes on the show, Tim, is how can we support you? Yeah. You know, this... You know, it's really cool to have uh, an author who's doing such great things on Amazon uh-huh. here living in Columbus. And, yeah. you know, one of the challenges I would assume is, you know, you got to get your name out there. Right, right, right. Um, you know, how can how can we help? Yeah, yeah. I, I think, well, first, you know, the book, book, buying the book, getting to know the story. Yeah. Uh, uh, sharing that with a friend. There, there's things that word of mouth it is very powerful. Oh yeah. And especially when you've read something that's really impacted you, let people know. Now I'm also an inspirational speaker mm-hmm. and, and that's a, a, a big part of what, what I like to do mm-hmm. because I want to carry this 
message uh, to other people. So definitely uh, speaking opportunities uh, um, is, uh, would be a uh, big plus. And um, so, yeah, I, I think as far as that is concerned, you know, the books, social media is a powerful very, tool. Yeah, very. And, and, and when you read the book and you say and you share that and you and you tell people how it's impacted you, you go to Amazon and, and uh, write the reviews. Review. Yeah. Everybody, if, if you want to know, am I going to buy this book or not? Right. They go to Amazon. That's yeah. the go to. Mm hmm. And um, if when they see uh, um, kind of how the book has impacted people, yeah, that's a great way as well. Goodreads is another yeah. uh, uh, way uh, because a lot of people who are readers are uh, that's a good website for them. So they give an opportunity to to rate it and to uh, um, kind of write a review. Yep. So so those would be great ways awesome. that, that would be very helpful. Well, Columbus, it would mean a lot to Tim, and I know it would mean a lot to us if, uh, you know, we'd continue this conversation with him and his daughter. Uh, as you've heard, they've got an incredible story, and uh, I just want to encourage you, if you haven't already read the book, go ahead and buy that on Amazon or locally here at Viewpoint. We'll go ahead and put the uh, Amazon link in the description of this video so you can go directly to it and purchase it. And if you have enjoyed it, please write a review. I think it would mean a lot to you and it'll help other people see that this book is worth reading. So I just want to say thank you so much, oh, Tim, thank for you. coming Pleasure on and sharing on. your story. Yes. Uh, it means a lot that you would uh, talk about yeah. the things that you've gone through and not just um, not allow it to define you, but yeah. instead you're using it as a ministry to help other people and uh, mm -hmm. God's blessings on you, man. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. All right. Well, Columbus, thank you so much for watching uh, this edition of the Hashtag Celebrate Columbus Show. It's been awesome to talk with Tim, to learn more about his daughter, Faith, and honestly, more than anything, to to celebrate his wife yeah. and their relationship together. And, um, you know, life can be full of ups and downs. Mm -hmm. But as you've heard today uh, with Tim, it's all about how you respond to it and how you use that to help other people. So... Thank you for watching this edition of the Hashtag Celebrate Columbus Show.